Hey everyone, Sir Termo here again. And today, and over the next three days, we're gonna give you some OPO6 Bello Betty gameplay. I have seen this deck quite a few times in our games in Sims. And honestly, it's, it's one of those decks that I really liked when I tried it out in OPO5. And it feels like, unfortunately, it's a little bit inconsistent. Let's just get it out of the way. It's a little bit inconsistent. But when it gets the curve, when it gets what it needs to get, it can just high roll like anybody, any deck. It can literally be any deck. And that's kind of what I like about this. It's like a super burning, shiny star where you can sh you can burn very bright or you can just fizzle out. So this is my list with Opio Sets. And Opio Sets gives us access to a couple of new things, right? So the first one is in Opio Sets, we get this new Ivankov that's a five cost. And when you play him, you look at the top three cards of your deck and you get to play another revolutionary type character that has 5,000 power or less. Well, guess what? Literally, all your other revolutionary type characters are all 5K or less. So literally, this lets you play any one of your revolutionary cards that we have in the deck, and it even lets you play another Ibankov. So it's not restricted, like, oh, it can't be an Ibankov. It literally lets you play another Ibankov as well, which can synergize and let you just get a ton of value. You can play a Ka Karasu out of there and just reduce the opponent's power, uh, uh, the leader's power, playing a Suma, and then all of a sudden you have a Rusher, etc., etc. So this is an amazing new tool that kind of adds some consistency to this deck because it lets you build that board that the opponent has to deal with. The other new tools that we get are Okiku, right? So Okiku in OPO6, just another trigger that doesn't cost us a card from our hand. Because that's the problem with Cracker and Smoothie, that they force us to have to discard a card from our hand. Okiku doesn't have to do that. And it's very easy for you to get your opponent down to three life. And it's also a card that if the opponent kills, they just get your life back to you, which could potentially be another trigger. And then the last card is Reject. And we literally play four Rejects because this card, I know it's an NL card and it's been used in Karakuri, but like, I feel like this card was made for Bello Betty. You play Reject, right? And yeah, you're spending four Dawn to get rid of the opponent's last life. But remember, your Bello Betty is buffing your board by like 3K. So who cares that you just use four Dawn? All your units are still gonna be like 8Ks, 9Ks. I and mean, if you have the Karasu in the field, you're getting your lead, their leader to 4K. So now you're, bad, you're getting even more value from your attacks. So yeah, you lose four, you lose four Dawn, but like you more than make up for it because of the Bello Betty abilities. And, and that's why I've played four Rejects there. So that's like the new tools from Opio sets. If you're not familiar how this deck works, it's a very, very aggressive deck. So think of like Soros. Um, I guess really the closest similarity is Soros, like Soros that likes to go really aggressive. But you just want to build a board and just try to push a ton of damage into the opponent by just discarding a, discarding a revolutionary from your hand, buffing your board by 3k each and just attacking into the opponent. The problem is there's two things there. Building a board is very difficult when we have this black meta where we have Sakasuki and Moira and Perona being able to get rid of your board, right? So it's a lot easier said than, said than done to actually get a board to be built, to actually be able to push damage into the opponent. The second thing is that you are discarding a revolutionary card anytime you want to use her effect. So it's not difficult for you to kind of run out of steam and just end up with no cards in your hand for you to be able to discard. So you have to be very careful about which card you discard and when you actually discard it. But the deck does have a couple of things to mitigate those downsides right in terms of like getting punished by opponent removing our board that's why we have all these trigger units so kuma can get played for free morley can get played by you just cutting a car limberg same way you have your cracker you have your sanji and you have your kiku like we talked about so you have 4 8 12 14 16 20 20 of your cards that you can get from your life trigger, allowing you to, even when you're getting your board removed, you still get those additional cards on the field if you're putting an attack into your leader. So it's, that's why a lot of times it's better to just take the life, because if you get a trigger, if you get a trigger unit from life, it ends up giving you just so much value in this deck compared to other decks. So don't be afraid to take the life. And that kind of that's how we mitigate this issue of opponent being able to remove our life. Now, let's talk about the rest of the cards in the deck since we're doing like a complete deck breakdown. So again, Bello Betty 
discard card, give 3Ks, right? So it's a board heavy centric. Inazuma is a nice rush card, right? So if another one of your units has 7K power, then this card can get rush, right? Which means that you're able to just have an additional attacker that the opponent has to deal with, especially because you can give this, you can you can play this, right? You can play Inazuma and then play the Bellabelli ability and now your Inazuma is a 7K and another one of your units is going to be an 8K and potentially a third unit is also going to be like a 5K to 8K, right? So that's the whole idea that you're able to just play this and even though you don't have a board, you have a rusher that gets you value. Ivankov is one of the engines of this deck, similar to the five cards that we talked about, allowing us to be able to summon another unit from our hand. So a lot of times what you want to do is you want to set up two units on the field. Then when you play Ivankov, you're able to use the Belobati ability on those two units and the Ivankov. And the Ivanka lets you summon something like a Karasu from your hand, and your other two units can attack into the opponent, right? So if this has 7k, you're able to kind of get a free revolutionary from your hand, and he ends up being an engine that just lets us put two units at a time in the field, which is how we're able to deal with all this removal that opponents might have. Karasu is the MVP of this deck. This card can target your opponent's leader and give him minus 1k power. So now Anytime you attack with a 5k unit into your 4k into their 4k leader, that's a 2k counter they have to give you. And that adds up. That adds up very quickly. And when you attack for 6k, it means that the opponent no longer is able to really block you with just a single card. This card is the reason that I win most of my games. And it's literally the MVP. Is your target with either one of the Ivankovs. Usually with either one of these Ivankovs, you're trying to summon this Karasu into the field. Koala is a nice 2k. And it can also be just a, a obviously another revolutionary army card. You can give the opponent 3k and allow your Kuma to KO it, which can be also good in certain edge cases, like if you're going against like a Sanji blocker. We talked about Kuma, it really just a trigger, but also lets us KO Rebecca, right? Rebecca or any other blocker that has 2k or less power. So it makes it really useful to be able to get deal with those with those units. Bello Betty is just a searcher and another unit that can get buffed up by Bello Betty or that we can discard. Morley is great because again, it's a trigger unit and also he can ignore blockers. So if the opponent goes down to zero life, they have to watch out for this Morley coming down and just going through their blockers no matter what. So that's, that can be also another game winning card depending on which deck you're going against. Lindbergh is another trigger unit. That's the reason we play it. He's not as good as our other revolutionary cards, but he does let us KO units with 3K power or less. So again, similar to Kuma, Let's just target the Rebecca, or if you synergize it with a Koala, can let you target anything that has 6k power, right? Because you can reduce it by 3 with Koala, and then attack with Limburg to KO it, which is pretty nice. Uh, and then we do have a couple of yellow cards here. Again, we have Cracker, another trigger unit with double attack, which can be really nice in certain situations. I'm debating whether I should go for Crackers or for Sanji, so right now I kind of just split it into two. The Sanji is there as a blocker. Sometimes you do take a lot of damage early on and you might need that blocker to be able to survive that extra turn that you need to be able to present lethal into the opponent. So that's why Sanji is here. Uh, we have the Okiku. This is a free trigger unit. And then we have a Maru that lets me rest one of the opponent's blockers once we go down to one life. Uh, usually Reject is better. That's why we play four Reject and just two Amarus in my opinion. So that's like the deck list. And again, your game plan is always going to be exactly the same. Just all in. Balls to the walls, aggro into the opponent. <laughs> Simple as that. Just fill your board as much as you can. And whenever you have at least two units that can attack, when you have two, don't do it when you have one, unless you're about to commit lethal. When you have at least two, preferably three, then that's when you want to use your Bello Betty ability to buff them up and attack into the opponent, right? So fill your board and then get value from this Bello Betty, get value from this Karasu, and just go from there. It means what what it means with this deck aggression is that it's very good against these decks that cannot deal with their aggression. So it's very good in my opinion against Katakuri, and it's very good in my opinion against like Riju decks because those two decks are really bad into this aggression. It is not great against Anel because of the heal, and it's not great against Black like I talked about because they can just remove a lot of your units. But even against Black, sometimes you can get enough aggression. Depending, right? I think against Mora is a little bit harder because they have five life. Against Sakasuki, you could potentially sneak in and be able to just kill them because they only have four life. Because you, again, have these rushers and have this Karasu to make their life a little bit more miserable. So, so it's going to depend. But I, I really like this deck. It's a little bit inconsistent, though. 
I think it's so close. It's so close to actually being really, really good and kind of being a little bit of a power. But we'll see if we ever get more evolutionary support. But that's the deck breakdown with this deck. Today we're going to have games against Katakuri and then against Queen. So pretty much against Yellow to kind of show you the amount of pressure that we can put in with this deck. So hope you enjoy these games. And if you do, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post One Piece videos every single day. Enjoy the games. In this match, we're going against Katakuri. I actually think I want to go first here. Just because of the five, the five drop curve. This is not the hand that we want. This is better. We don't have a great hand though. We didn't find the one cost battle Betty. We're going to have to rely on triggers, I guess. Yeah, we'll go like this. We can play this Ivankov. We don't have a lot of revolutionary cards actually, huh? Ugh. That's not great either. Yeah, that's not great. Not a lot of revolutionary cards. Um, opponent can. I want the opponent to attack into my life, right? That's what I need. That, that's what I need to happen. Happen. We can get rid of one reject. I don't think I need both. The question here is: Am I supposed to attack with this Marley? All right. Trigger. 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 Hit them for the. Yeah, I messed him up. Here we go. And we have a double attack here. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, this is uh, this is spicy now. We need one more revolutionary card to make this double attack actually matter. Uh, so, so we can play Ivanka Van Limburg, right? So we need one more revolutionary card so that we can play... Oh, 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 baby. We go here first. We go here first. I guess we can get the Inazuma, to be honest. Or we can get the second Morley. I guess it doesn't matter. I guess we'll we'll grab the Inazuma because we want to discard. We're gonna discard some of the stuff here. I was I was hoping that I would get the Karasu. Yeah, because we're gonna go like this. We're gonna go here. Oh, I guess we don't have the double attack. We just messed up. <laughs> I forgot about... I forgot about needing... Uh, sorry, I forgot about needing a, a Dawn for this to have double attack. All right? We'll summon this guy here. I guess we'll just play it this way. We'll go... We'll go five. I mean, sorry. We'll go eight. We'll go eight. We'll go five. We don't have another... We need another revolutionary card for us to actually get value here. Yeah, I messed up. I need to add down here. The double attack here, I think, was worth more. So what we should have done is actually not play this Ivankov. We should have actually grabbed the three drop. I mean, we had the Inazuma. We should have just grabbed the Inazuma, play the Inazuma, trash the Limber, and we would have had one, two, three attacks into the opponent, including a double attack, because we could have given this the one down. And the opponent would have been in a worse situation right now. Yeah, I just messed up. I messed that up. I had the, I had the perfect hand. I had the perfect hand, and I just threw it away. So now the opponent can just stall out and just not attack into us. And then we won't get any triggers or any revolutionary cards. I guess what I can do is that I can play this Okiku next turn and just like not attack with my other units. This is not bad if I get a Koala. I definitely messed that up. I, I, had, I had a beautiful turn. What I should have done last turn, right? If I remember that this required done, we could have done three right so one for the bell belly three for the inasuma right put one down the cracker discard the car and we could have that double attack we could have the inasuma for seven the morley for eight and this for five yeah you, you want to attack into us like that absolutely so i want to play this okiku i want to play this okiku and i'm just going to attack here for eight have the opponent take the life or give me two 2k counters. I guess if the opponent gives me two 2k counters, it sucks because I, I, I keep I keep drawing these three jets. We only have, I guess, four Okikos, two Crackers, two Sanjis, four Rejets, two Amarus. Okay, opponent takes it. And I don't even care if they have like an Ami here or, uh, I don't know, whatever. 
whatever they could have doesn't matter, right? We really desperately need another revolutionary though. Otherwise we're still in trouble. Oh, they, okay, well, I guess that gives them a life, so that does matter. But they did trash two cards. So now they have to attack into me. Maybe they decide not to attack and we just have a stole me. But eventually you have to start attacking, right? These rejects are not bad. Because we can, again, yeah, we'll go here. We'll press OK. When I should look at my life. They should look at my life, I think. I guess it doesn't matter if they got something nice here, right? All right. How much stone do we have? We have nine. Do we ever go reject, reject? Oh my goodness. Opponent left that life on their top. Opponent left that life on the top of their life. So I'm thinking that this is actually like a trigger. We can buff this three up. Oh, uh, no. Oh, no. This. Oh, shoot. I'm so bad. I'm so bad. And this only works when it's only one life. I need to. I need to. I need to get them to one life first. Okay. I need to read cards. This only works when they have one life. So, we need, we need to get into one life. That's not hard for us to do, right? I don't think that that's hard for us to do. We'll go here. And buff this three, right? This is nine, eight, eight. We're going to start with a nine. That's going to force the opponent to give me every card. They're going to use this trigger. If it's an Ami or a Beige, it's a little bit annoying. This Beige? Okay. We go 9. Okay, so if we go Reject, it's going to be 4. We're going to put 4 here for 9, so we'll have like 2 9 attacks. So it's actually probably better for me to just go for 8. I go for 8. Force the opponent to give me the 2-2 two -two case. They take it. And then we just go reject, I guess. We'll go reject and we'll go for 10. This actually counts as hitting their life. So the opponent could actually get there, right? Yeah, we just go for 10. If, the, if you have it, you have it. I forgot about reject only working when the opponent has one life. Two, 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 one. That one turn that I messed up is the reason that I'm going to lose this game. <laughs> GG's. Fortunately for us, yeah, there was that one turn. Again, I'm still learning how to play this deck, but there was that one turn where you had such a big misplay. This is so good. This is everything here is so good. The opponent chose to go first. We go Bello Betty. Opponent gets pudding. So the, the, problem is, the pudding is annoying because he can kill our Bello Betty after the fact. Uh, the opponent got the 2k with their man there. Unless we get the Kuma. I guess if we get the Kuma, we can just KO that. We need to find... We, we need to find the Ivankovs. Right? The Ivankovs will be really nice. The Ivankovs here will be really nice. We do get the Kuma at least, I guess. Yeah, we get the Kuma. I guess that's better than nothing, but it's, it's too slow. This is way too slow. I guess let's see if the op opponent has to attack into us if they want to look. They, they actually should be looking at my life. Like, honestly, look at my life. You want to get rid of my life. I guarantee you. It's going to be better for you. going to be a lot better for you. Yeah, look at my life. Thank you. You don't want me to hit these triggers. And if it's not a trigger, you leave it in the top. Okay. Not that the opponent has any blockers, I guess, but this is still this is still more efficient. Um, we can play the Slimberg, I guess. We can play the Slimberg, and that still lets me KO the pudding. It actually lets me KO anything. 
It's a Limburg. Is this Limburg or do we actually just go Koala Barto and just set up for next turn? I think I need to go more aggressive. I think I go I need to go more aggressive. So I think we just go like this. And just set up to this car and attack a bunch for five. Will this car Limburg or Morley? Probably Limburg, to be honest. Keep the Morley for a potential get through their blockers. I mean, I guess this does work against the Sandy, right? One is going to hit. You should look at my life again. They looked at their own this time. They left it at the top. We'll take it. And just like that, they get punished. We're not going to have time to play Okiku this game. So we'll trash the Okiku. They go Neko. So now we know that the opponent has a card here that's probably going to be like a Nami or something like that. We can go Karasu, Trash, get this down to four, go buff here, here, here. Still have two down, do our thing. I guess we probably, I, I, don't, even, I don't even know that we buffed them early. I think I, I think I want to buff everything else. Yeah, I think we go Karasu. We go like this and we'll trash. I think I'd rather trash this Limburg. We buff here, here, here. So these are five, five, six. We can get to sit on two more units. Uh, so let's start with... I guess let's start sitses. Let's start with the sitses. Have the opponent use that trigger right now. Whatever that trigger is, if it's, if it's a Nami, it should be okay. But this Karasu is so good because now the opponent cannot just counter out of this with 2Ks. Right? Uh, let's go sit here. If we get them down to one, we have the reject threat. Now, the problem is that the opponent's able to get rid of three of my units. So they can get rid of three of my units. They can also just have lethal next turn, huh? Hmm. They can actually just have lethal as well. Okay. They gave me two 2Ks there. They gave me another 2K here. And this is going to be another 2K. Because they have three attackers and I only have two life. And they gave me another 2k. But I think they're actually going to just focus on getting rid of my board. I only have a 2k. So if they set up their Donna properly. 7k. And then a 7k. And then a 9. I guess I can go 7, 8, 8. I guess they don't have a good way to do this, right? Because they have to go seven on one of these. They have to start with the seven. If they go for six, I can just counter. Once the opponent goes down to one life, we have reject. Once I go down to one life, I have a Maru. Opponent just show me one beige. Hmm. Karasu needs to die as well. If they leave Karasu alive, then the opponent goes down to 4k on their leader which makes it 100% more difficult for them to be able to block anything that we do. Yeah, so they're going to go ahead and kill the Karasu, just like I said they had to. This means that we're not dying. We're still going to have two units on the field. I guess with two units on the field, it's two, it actually could not... It's possible that it's not enough. And by possible, I mean it's very likely that it's not. Right, because the opponent just needs to have a beige in one of their triggers, and they should be okay. Wait, what? No way, right? I just go like this, and I just discard this morning. Now I have three units on the field. I need to have the three units. That made no sense. They're so desperate to kill this, which means that they must have like a Sanji blocker. They must have like a Sanji blocker, huh? Huh. Again, we have Regen, right? Now, Regen is four. Hmm. Regen is four. Opponent goes down to nine, goes up to nine down next turn. Regen is four. This is five. This is six. Let's go seven. This is a Sandy or a Beige, right? This has to be a Sandy or a Beige. 
The opponent could still technically have lead though here, especially if I play this reject. So it is the beige. If I go reject, I can only go up to eight. If I go five. Ha. Wow, 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 wow. Are we ever supposed to just slow down and kill their units instead? Go seven and then seven again. Seven. I guess we can go seven and six. Okay. Okay, opponent doesn't even bother. But I, I, I hate that the opponent surrendered because I really wanted to think what I wanted to do here. The opponent has a Maru, right? I was debating if it's worth it to go for the boar. If I go for the boar and I kill at least one unit, then we know... So, so I'm thinking that I do like going for boar, right? Opponent only goes up to nine, done, next turn. So they don't have enough to play 10 cost big mom, and I know that. So I can go for seven, and the opponent can choose to save it, and then we just go for another, like, seven, I guess? Or go for nine to guarantee it. And then we just chill. Then the opponent has two units to attack with, which means that we still keep one unit and the Bello Betty. And then we can just go reject and just attack them for like uh, 11, right? Reject, attack them for 11. If they survive the 11 hit, then we can go ahead and attack them for five. I like that. I think it would have been better for me to go for board. Once the opponent hit that beige of the trigger, he made it he made it so that I need to go for the board. Right? That means my units will stay alive. Opponent can play a seven cost big mom, but we just trash our own life. I guess if they play seven cost big mom and we trash our own life, the opponent still has two done. So they can technically try to kill us. But that will only be a 6k and then a 7k. And I guess that will have been enough for them to win. So maybe instead of a seven, maybe instead of attacking for maybe we just go for six here. We would have gone seven and then six. But that feels like that would have been losing to the opponent having a 2k, 1k, another 1k. So, and then they would have been able to still have three units to get rid of my whole board. So, but I guess that would leave me the Sanji. So if I have the Sanji in the field, no, because then they still have the Amaru. I don't think there was any guaranteed way to beat that, but I think I like the idea of going for board here, like I was going to go before the opponent surrender. So, GG's. In this match, we're going against Katakuri. I will absolutely go first. We'll definitely keep this hand. This is a very strong start here. Um... You know, I probably should have actually gone second, now that I think about it. So that we kind of disrupt their game plan. I don't mind them attacking into us, though. So we'll see how this goes. We'll get to play our Bello Betty here. And I guess, honestly, let's grab this Inazuma. The only reason I'm grabbing this Inazuma is so that I can play a next turn. So that we can set up for two attackers and the Karasu on the future turn. That's very annoying. Maybe I actually need to go Kuma instead of the Ina Inazuma now, right? So maybe we go like this. We go for Sitsuke. Because I don't want this to be able to attack into my Bello Betty. So we'll go like this and KO that. Right? We'll go ahead and play the Ivankov into the Karasu. If I get a trigger, that'd be even better. Opponent looked at my life, so obviously they're trying to prevent the triggers. I think that's what you need to do as a Kakuri player. Stop me from getting the triggers. They moved it to the bottom. So obviously it probably was a trigger that they didn't want me to see. They go for the thing there. Okay, so so now we can go here. We can also go here. We can grab another Karasu. We can trash. This Ivanka. I don't think I'm going to need another one. I guess, honestly, it could be useful. Depending how much the opponent clears my board. Because I feel like I want... I, no, I want to keep the Inazumas. I want to keep the Inazumas. So we go like this. Uh, we'll play this guy. Give this minus four, right? So now we can attack for five. For five. For five. Three times. And the opponent has to give me two Ks every time. Because their leader is a 4K leader. We go five. Now, next turn, opponent's gonna just clear my board. Like, they're gonna kill these two guys. 
potentially kill the Lobetti as well if they have a Gadatsu. It's tough, because I mean you don't wanna. Yeah, it was a 4k. It was, you, your leader was a 4k, my friend. I, I hate it when opponents miss, miss that. They forget about that. That, feel, that feels bad. Yeah, opponents. This is actually a rank match. I decided to start joining the rank lobbies for better opponents. So, I mean, I can't, like, you know, I can't excuse that. Yeah, you're going to just kill both units. Again, they're going to just play Gadatsu, probably KO this Bello Betty. We'll have two more units to attack with still. Actually, we can play the Inazuma. We have seven down. What if we play Inazuma and Karasu? Wait, this this would be kind of crazy. I think I like this. If they play Gadatsu here to kill the Bello Betty, I'll go in Asuma and Karasu and trash this back to the Kuma. And just have Karasu twice into the Katakuri to make it a 3k leader. And that's gonna be so huge. Like so huge. So let's see what they do. I, I just ignore their Perospero, right? I just ignore their Perospero here. Okay, so it's not even a Gedatsu. Oh, it's double Perospero. So since it's, since it's not a Gedatsu, I still like going for Inazuma and and um, and the Karasu, right? Because we can go ahead and book this up, book this up, book this up. Or we can book this here. But then that means that we're not bucking the Karasu up. I still like this. I still like this here. We'll trash this guy. We'll go one. Because I might actually choose to KO one of the Perosperos. I'm kind of scared of dying next time if the opponent just goes all in on my face. I, do I have the way to just kill them this turn? Maybe I do have the way to just kill them this turn, though. Yeah, let's just go like this. Right? Because if we go like this, and we give this another minus 2, that's an 8k into a 3k. Opponent has no counters for this. We have an 8, 7, 9, when the opponent's leader is a 3k. They could have triggers, right? They could have Beige. They could have Nami. Which is kind of annoying if they do. They don't hit anything. This is 7, 8... If we go seven, opponents at three, they have to give me three cards here. They should absolutely give me three cards here. They need to give me the three cards. You cannot go down to silver life. If you go down to silver life, you just lose. Yeah, so there's one, two, three. We go eight. And if the opponent has a beige, we can still... Okay, well, they don't have it. So I guess we'll go 9 into the 3. That's 5, 7, 9. That's 3 2k counters and a 1k. They don't have it. So we end up winning the game. So, GG's. In this match, we win against Queen. Hmm. I'll go first. Going first is nice because if we get the 5 drop, we can just play it. He also lets us attack first. This is not bad because this can kill... Their early blockers. Yeah, so we got the five drop here, uh, which I think is definitely worth bringing. Yeah, it's definitely bringing this five cost out there because he just gets me a free revolutionary on the field. Uh, opponent shouldn't be attacking into us. Yeah, like opponent shouldn't be attacking into us at all. Uh, we can go ahead and attack for five here. I would like to play this Kuma into one of their cheap blockers or one of their weak blockers, like if they have uh, if they have Brulee or something like that. Hmm. But I might need to just play this as it is. I might have to go like this. Hmm. I guess I can play the Koala here. I'm trying to see how I want to do this. Because I want to put the opponent up in a situation where they have to like block a lot. While we can all we also want to be able to develop two units next turn. 
I guess we can go we can go here and just go Karasu. Oh wait, we gonna we wanna go like this. We wanna go like this. Just have it set up so that we can attack a bunch of times next turn. And have this Karasu attack for six, five, 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 three times, and the opponent's gonna be a 4k unit. This rejet is actually pretty nice, by the way, because when, when the opponent might feel safe at one life, and then they're just gonna get punished. They actually attack into us. So if we get a trigger here, the opponent just gets punished and we get the trigger. So it's kind of awkward now because we have too many units. So we, maybe we over high. I guess we didn't need to play this Kuma, see? Right, like, there you go. I didn't need to play the Kuma. Uh, we can trash one of these guys. I guess we'll leave one of these. No, because we have to... The other option is that we, need, we don't need to play the Ivanka. We can just play Karasu here and leave this Ivanka in my hand. Right? It's the same thing. I'm just going to be overriding a unit. But I guess it gives me another another big unit for next turn. It gives me two big units, right? The problem is that I will need to give this the power. So I think it's actually here. Yeah, I think we just go like this. We'll trash one of these. Right? We'll go five. This is going to force a bunch of 2k counters from the opponent. Five, five, six, six. Yeah, we go five. Let's start eating up their counters here. They do have this blocker and they're going to get triggers, right? Like Velo Betty, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that's another 2k. We'll go five again. They are four done. There'll be a six next turn. This Karasu staying on the field means that the opponent is always going to have one less. We'll go six. Locks it. And then we'll go six again. Takes it, right? Yep. We ate up three 2k counters there. Opponent got another blocker. Yeah, this Kuma would have been so much better in my hand. But I mean, I wasn't ever expecting the opponent to attack into me. We actually in a situation that I'm not used to with Bello Betty where... We have too much <laughs> units in our field. Uh, the funny thing is that we can technically kill them next. Like, in another turn, we're going to be able to... Okay, opponent can have Katakuri. If they have Katakuri, that's when it gets a little bit messy. So if they have Katakuri, that's when it's going to get a little bit messy. The opponent decided to just attack with their blocker. We can still give this three what we need. And we can still play this Ivankov, right? This still gets the attack. Uh, I guess, honestly, we probably attack their handcuff with our Bello Betty. Just so that, because I, I don't want that to stay as a block. If the opponent goes to 1 HP, they're going to get punished by this reject, by the way. That's what I'm hoping for. We can, we're can we going to go with Bankoff here first. Maybe we hit the Inazuma. If we hit the Inazuma, then we can just attack with Bello Betty into the Boa Hancock. And that's going to be even better. I still think it's correct to just do the minus on the queen. I think I, I think I'm in a good position, right? I can just kind of rush them down. They deciding how to. I guess they're thinking of like, okay, if I have Sanji, how do I need to place the top card to my deck, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, which is fine. Um, yeah, we'll go like this. Give me the Inazuma. Ooh, yeah, baby. I guess I could have gone here, right, and KO their blocker too. Um. Yeah, so we know that we're going to be able to give this, that this is going to have rush, so we can buff here, 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 attack for seven here. So we're going to start here for two. But I shouldn't be blocking this or countering this. If they give me a card for this boa, yeah, I was going to say. Um, we can leave this. Mm. Let's go like this. Right, this has rush. We have nine, eight, seven. We'll start here first. Give it minus one. We'll have this rigid for next turn. So even if the opponent is able to heal by one, the rigid is gonna be huge, right? Oh, I'm gonna trash my life. Absolutely, right? So this is seven, this is nine, and we can also go seven with Bello Betty. So we can go seven here. Interesting that they're playing so focused in this list. It doesn't affect me. 
You only have two attacks next turn. You're going to have to block or give me cards here. Because, again, the fact that their leader is a 4k leader now makes it so hard for them. All right. So then we go seven here. Once again, block. And then we have a 9k. I guess you don't have to, you have to counter here, right? But I just don't think they have the, I don't think they have any cards to counter with. They can go to double 2k here. And then they'll have to block the 9k. And then we're still going to have one, two, three, four, five units. Opponent could play Katakuri. And I guess if they play Katakuri, they can't heal, actually. Because they won't have enough done. Yeah, they only have eight, right? So they only have, they have to give me another card here. They did have the Katakuri, right? They have to give me another card. And then they have to give me the blocker. Yeah, unfortunately for the opponent, we just, we just kind of hit the nuts. <laughs> this rush here was kind of nutty. Yeah, this rush card here was kind of nutty. If we didn't hit this, we would have to go five into their blocker and then go like seven and then, you know, the rest. But the most that you can do here is just draw. You get another blocker. Cute. We can just reject there, right? Yeah, we can just reject one of their units. They do get the Karasu out of the way, which I guess is cool for them. Yeah, they get to get rid of the Karasu. If we reject, that's better. Yeah. GG's. Yeah, it's it's too easy, right? We didn't even we didn't even need to do the reject to be honest. Um we had enough. Opponent only has two cards. We still have five down here. We could trash one of these units. Buff up here, here, here. Or buff up the Bello Betty, actually. That way we have multiple attacks and we just win the game, right? So, geez. hey, welcome back, everyone. Hope you enjoyed those games of Bello Betty. Again, just a bunch of pressure into the Karakuri player. What else can I say? So, that's kind of what you saw here. Bunch of pressure. Opponent couldn't really do anything. And we got the value there. Uh, same thing against the Queen player. We just put so much pressure into them. They didn't even get... They were at 8 down by the time that they died. So, they couldn't even play one of their big 9 drops to actually try to survive. And that's what you're trying to do with this deck. That's all that you're trying to do. We saw the reject putting in some work against Katakuri, which again is one of the reasons why I really like this card in this deck. Unfortunately, it gets banned, right? So once it gets banned, we have to kind of go back to the drawing board and probably go more Amaru's than reject. So, but anyways, but that that that's it for us for today. Hope you enjoyed today's games. We have two more videos with Bella Betty coming out over the next two days. So hope you subscribe to us. We post one piece videos every single day. That way you keep up to date with this. So enjoy your day.